everyone so in today's video I wanted to sit down and chat with you guys about my experience traveling to Italy with EF ultimate break I just got back from Italy and like, like a couple days ago and I'm still so jet lagged I have like a coke right here because I'm like I need to make sure I actually stay up and go to bed at the right time here because I've been going to bed at 4 p.m. here and waking up at like 3 a.m. and it's just been a horrible cycle so I'm like trying to stay up and it's very challenging but I'm gonna try and get through this video and share with you guys everything so I did pay for this trip 100% myself this video is not sponsored at all but I have known about EF ultimate break for a few years from people I follow who have gone on trips with them and ever since then I had been urging to go on a trip ever since my like study abroad was canceled in 2020 in Italy so it finally happened and yeah cannot wait to share everything with you so with EF you could either purchase your flights and everything else or you can choose to buy your own flights which I did only because I, like I said I was supposed to study abroad and I did have flight credit that did expire by the end of this year so I did buy my own separate flights and that still worked out because technically you do have to have your own transfer once you land in the airport to your hostel or hotel but luckily they still got us on the bus with everybody so we didn't have to find our own transportation and everything worked out which is really nice but our flight did get canceled like the night before we were supposed to leave and so we like the day before trying to get uh, get our flights changed and instead of leaving at 9 a.m. from LA I ended up leaving at 6 a.m. so we were up 2 30 at the airport around 3 34 and we headed off to New York which was our layover for six hours before we headed off to Venice and I did do the Venice Florence and Rome trip and then I will say this flight to from New York to Venice was so uncomfortable. I did get a window seat, but the person I was sitting next to was a very tall guy, so I couldn't even like move a little. And I just took sleep gummies and slept in one position like for eight hours. I did not move around, did not get up once. So when I got up, my back hurt so bad. And it was very painful, but once we arrived, in Venice, going through customs was so easy. I've never flown international, like, pretty much by myself, and it was very smooth. I always thought it was a way longer process. I don't know why when I have flown international with my family, I've only really gone to Mexico. It always seemed like such a stressful, long process, but when we got in, you literally just scanned your passport, and they give you a stamp, and that was it, which I was very pleased about. It was very quick. We grabbed our luggage and there was a spot to meet our tour director and our rest of our group in the airport, which is very easy, very simple. We found them quickly and then we just waited for the rest of our group to get there and then we got a bus transfer to our hotel slash hostel. So once we got to Venice and our hostel, we got our keys with our roommates who we were going to be with for those couple of days and here is our hostel is actually really nice and even though the rooms fit like nine people EF only put you with no more than four so I went with one of my best friends and we stayed with other two girls and it was very nice and a good experience so our tour director gave us about a couple hours to freshen up and um, rest a little before going on like an orientation walk where they'll take us to the city and walk around and and just show us around you know the city and then from there going to our welcome dinner seeing the city was very cool it was so beautiful and we even stopped and our tour director bought us gelato and it was very yummy and just being there was great and beautiful and then we headed back and then we went to our welcome dinner we got to meet everyone talk to everyone more had tons of Aperol spritz I feel like that was just refilled and just kept coming and it was actually really good. I had tried an Aperol spritz before and we had learned that Aperol actually comes from like Venice. So I'm like, well, while we're here, of course, and it was actually really good. So uh, we had that, we had our welcome dinners, very fun getting to know everybody. And then that night our hostel was having like a DJ and music going on. And even though we were so exhausted and hadn't slept, cause even though we slept, I slept all eight hours, I was w still waking up and it was a very uncomfortable sleep. So I felt like I didn't rest and then the night before waking up at 2.30, it was insane. So, um, but we still wanted to check it out because they didn't have um, like a, a club night or DJ, you know, the 
next day we were there so we're like we have to check it out so we checked it out and we got there a little early before everyone showed up but by the time it started getting a little bit more fun and more people coming up we're like yeah let's go to bed because we have to be up early and we have not slept but yeah it was still cool you know hanging out with everybody yeah it was nice so the next day we had breakfast and we were running late to our tour to meet our local guy to show us around Venice and everything and a boat was supposed to take us so we were like running and quickly trying to get there on time and we got to Venice like the other part of the island I believe I think like the first day we were on like I think they said the university side this side was like the Saint Mark Square or something like that so we had a local guide who's from Venice show us around and it was so cool to see everything and that tour director was great and was very funny and it was nice learning a little bit more about Venice. We took some pictures, we went to a glass making which was really cool and that was like all included and then we got to ride a gondola and after riding the gondola which was so cool that was definitely like a bucket list moment which was awesome. Our tour director bought us all like hazelnut cannolis She's really good, like, oh my gosh, so amazing. She was very sweet, which I will get into that later, but it was very good. So after coming back from that day, we rested a little bit and then we got dinner and got some pizza. Um, it was like nearby our hotel. And then we had to be up early again in the morning to head off to Florence. So we headed off to Florence and before stopping there, we stopped in Ferrera. Got to be there for a couple hours. We toured this castle, which was really cool. And got to climb these steps to overlook, that overlook the city. And that was so beautiful. It was really hot that day. So we were like dying of s and sweating afterwards. And it was really hot. But afterwards we went to McDonald's because even though we're in another country, the McDonald's is different. So we wanted to try that because especially in the States, there is no snack wraps. And we wanted to try a snack wrap. So it was very good and we had all we had had was like alcohol and warm water, you know, because our water even after we're filling it, it would get warm because I didn't have like, I didn't bring my hydro flask or anything. So I was like craving a soda and it was, it just hit the spot. So after we got on back onto our bus, we headed off to Florence and we got our new roommates and our room was actually really nice because instead of being in one room with a couple other people, we got lucky where it was like in one room two separate rooms with their own bunks and stuff so we got really lucky with that and then there was like a market right by where we were staying so we went there to just get some caffeine we got these like little starbucks coffees that they don't sell here and those were actually really good and then again we rested for a couple hours until we met again with our group to do another orientation walk in florence and explore the city a little bit and it was really nice. Our, again, we stopped by and our tour director bought us gelato again. And it was definitely the best gelato. She had said it was like the best and it truly was. It was so, so good. It was called Benchies. Oh my gosh, amazing gelato. And yeah, we got to sightsee a little bit more, take photos. And then after that, we had dinner together in Florence. So our like tour director, technically there's only like two dinners that you can have all together which is welcome and for well but we all chose to eat together because we all enjoyed being with each other and it was always fun when we were all together so we always chose to eat together so we all ate dinner after our walk and that was so much fun that night alone was probably one of my favorite nights that we had there the food first of all was amazing still one of my favorite meals i had we got like some free limoncellos and it was so fun and then Everyone was like, I feel like that night everyone was starting to like open up to a little, open up to each other a little bit more, get to know each other better. And then we all went to a karaoke bar, which was really cool and fun. And that was just such a fun night. And then after that night, we had our next day in Florence with again a local guide and our um, who was from Florence who showed us around the city a bit more and showed us different parts that we didn't get to see. So we got up, had breakfast, and met with her and got to explore more that we didn't get to see it was so fun and that day we also got to go to a leather shop where we learn how to you know tell the difference between real leather and fake leather and a lot of people we went shopping we got lunch with some people which we were trying to find this sandwich shop that i saw on tiktok everyone was there's this like famous sandwich place in florence 
I don't remember the name, but I had seen on TikTok that one, but everyone in the comments was like, go to Pino's, it's so much better, there's no line, blah, blah, blah. So we're trying to find this Pino's place. We walked so far opposite way, and it ma mapped us to the wrong place. So we just got something random, and it was fine, but later on for dinner, we ended up trying Pino's, and it was amazing. Another one of my favorite meals. It was so so good but before then we ended up climbing one of the towers which was over 400 steps and we it was a view overlooking all of florence and even though that was horrible like i was actually dying and luckily there was breaks but my legs were on fire um it was so worth it and it was definitely something you have to do it was really cool to see overlooking the city um, but yeah, it was challenging. <laughs> and then after we did that, we decided to go to the Gucci garden and that was really cool too. I think it was only like five euros to go in. The rooms and everything were so, so cool. Loved it. I'm really glad we did that. It was just a great experience. And then, like I said, we got sandwiches at Pino's and then and then after we had dinner we decided to have some wine go to a wine bar or a restaurant have a couple glasses because it was our last night in florence because technically the next day was a free day in florence but there was an optional excursion to go to cinque terre uh, which our entire group chose to do so that was technically our last night um, since we were coming back late um, the other day so it was really nice and that was like our favorite wine we had the whole trip so it was very good so after that we had our Cinque Terre day which everyone was really excited about I love the movie Luca so I was excited to see you know um, the town it was inspired by and so we woke up early for that we were so tired because it's just it was exhausting the whole thing because of our jet lag and waking up really early and everything so again our sweet tour director bought us uh, espresso shots uh, on the bus and that got everyone up and ready so then we had someone connect to Bluetooth and we were all singing on our way to Chica Terra and it was so much fun and a great time and then once we got there it was so beautiful we got to go to the three out of five towns the one first town we went to was um, I don't remember the names but it was like where you see that classic beautiful picture spot where everyone takes the second spot was where um, the town of where Luca was inspired by and then the third one was where uh, is like the beach town where a lot of people go be to the beach to swim so we hit all those three and the Luca one was for sure my favorite is so cool and oh my goodness we there was like we got there and we were all hungry it's time for lunch but like it was so packed none of the restaurants had spots for us but luckily there was a place which was called um, Luca and they had food you can order to go. So we ordered like, we all ordered like bowls of pesto and, and were able to like sit along the water and it was so nice. That was like a peak experience because even though we couldn't find a table, like it ended up working out because we had a beautiful be view of the whole town and ocean. It was so beautiful. And in that town, we were told that that's where like pesto originated or something. So it was so good having that pesto pasta and having great views. And it was just a dream, dream, dream. So that was so much fun. Then we went head over to the next town and went swimming and it was so much fun. Got to go in the water. We got some drinks on the beach and it was great. So after that trip, we got back late, like I said. We got back around 8, and a lot of people in Italy, you eat dinner at like 9 o'clock. So a lot of people went to dinner afterwards, but I was so tapped out and exhausted. After like, when I was like in the shower, I was just like, I can't, like I need to go to bed now. So I stayed back, and then my, my friend and um, everyone else went out to eat. But I went to bed early that night, and then we were up early again because it was our time to head over to Rome. And then before then, head um, have our first stop in Orvieto. We were in the bus to Orvieto. I slept most of it. Stopped at a gas station, which Italy gas stations are so nice. I'm like, I wish they looked like this in the States. Like, oh my gosh, it's crazy. And then they had like all these uh, like coffee bars. So I got some an espresso shot. And yeah, Orvieto was so beautiful. Such a tiny little quaint town and loved it. The greenery was so beautiful. 
and it was great to see it was not very touristy so it was very like it was not very hacked or anything and it was great up until after we got pizza for lunch i lost my phone and it was a moment of panic and i was like where's my phone and realized because after we had quickly gotten our pizza i sat at a bench and I had my water bottle, my pizza, and had put my phone down next to me, and it started to rain. So I quickly got up and we went underneath something to cover, and I realized I left my phone there. And uh, my friend was able to track me and find my friends and realized like I was still nearby. We called it, and an Italian woman picked it up and couldn't really understand each other, but figured out um, she had it with her. She worked at a shop, and with tracking my phone, we were able to find it and she held on to it thankfully and luckily it was not a big city it was pretty empty so i got it back and that was just a, like probably like five minutes of panic but yeah found it all good but yeah and it, i was always really good with my phone keeping in my bag and the reason why the one time i like was more relaxed with it was because i felt safe in that town because it was pretty empty and that was the time i lost it so yeah God, I'm glad I got that back. I'm also looking at my phone because I have all the videos and pictures and without this, I will totally forget what we did. So then after heading, being in Orvieto, we headed off to we headed off to Rome and this was nice because in this hotel it was we didn't have any other roommates it was just me and my friend which was oh, nice it was nice being with other people but it also was really nice just being by ourselves and you know being able to chat whatever um, freely and everything so it was nice and have more space and again after resting for a couple hours we met with our tour director and we explored the city of Rome which luckily the few weeks before had been extremely hot and humid in Rome and the day we got there it was like like raining but by the time we we're walking it was just gloomy and nice breeze which was nice because in Florence it was warm so honestly we all preferred that and we did walk for like two hours which was a lot but it was worth it because Rome is so big and there's probably a lot of things we wouldn't have seen ourselves if we weren't taking on the tour and it was really really cool and after all the sightseeing of Rome which was amazing like we when we first got off our train it was like the stop at the Colosseum and we all walked out it was amazing another peak experience we walked down the Colosseum was right there and I literally started tearing up like it was just like a dream moment coming true so it was very surreal it was very cool and loved it and so yeah that whole thing was really cool and after our tour we did get to um, we stopped at a place to get dinner that was really nice had some wine and food it's very delicious and then some of us decided to stay out our, at our first night in Rome so we went to like a karaoke bar and then stopped and got some wine and just chatted with us and it was very fun very nice until it was so hard to find transportation home because the trains had closed ubers and taxis were non-communicative or it was just a mess but luckily we all found a way home and yeah we got home safely like there's six of us but yeah it was a fun night until it was stressful to get home and then the next day was our guided tour with a local guide from rome and we got to see the Colosseum and a little bit of the ruins and that was so cool that was definitely my favorite uh local tour guide that we got we just all learned so much information about the Colosseum and we're actually engaged in it and it was so so cool to learn everything we learned and be inside it and it was just insane and it was still like so hard to compre comprehend the whole time that like like what life was like back then it was insane so and then after that tour and exploring the Colosseum and everything we got to part ways so we went to lunch at this Roman Jewish area which was really really good food we, they recommended it so good until I ended up feeling a little sick afterwards, I think um, something with, with whatever I ate did not sit well with my stomach. So after that, I did feel a little ill. But we did get to climb this tower that overlooked the views of Rome, and that was so cool. And then just sightsee and take photos. And then because I wasn't feeling that great, I, we did head home a little early just to rest. Since that was like our last full night in Rome, 
we did want to go out again so there was an ice bar we ended up going out to and which was really cool and then we got some dinner and got some pizza and then headed back and it was really cool though because before heading back we got to see the Coliseum at night and it was so beautiful I remember taking a video and I was like oh that'd be so cool if a Vespa drove by and a Vespa just drives by and it was just such a cool shot and it it was just so amazing seeing it all lit up at night and it was beautiful yeah, and then we headed home and then it was our last day our last full day in rome so that day we had a free day some people saw the vatican we didn't pay to do that we just had our whole free day in rome so that day we made a plan so the first thing to do was to go to the trevi in the morning so that way we can get pictures with it being least crowded so we went to the trevi took photos it was so beautiful and then our tour director recommended this 150 gelato flavors place so we went to literally it was like our breakfast and it was so so good and then after having that we went to the pantheon checked that out and then we had lunch which we just like stumbled across a random place because there are like literally restaurants everywhere but they open up at 12 so we were hungry around like 11 30 but we just walked around and towards like the coliseum until 12 until we stumbled up across one so we got some lunch and i can't remember if we got lunch or went shopping first but my friend did buy a bag so oh she did that first so yeah we went shopping like near the spanish steps because that's where they had all the designer shops and we stumbled across this um authentic leather shop and which my friend missed out on buying on her purse while we're in florence so she ended up buying it there and yeah and then we went to lunch that we stumbled upon and so good it was so great and then i got like a fresh orange juice and it was amazing and then after that that was our day and then we just went back to our hotel to rest relax before our uh, farewell dinner with everybody so we had our farewell dinner and then after that we all decided to go out because it was the gay pride parade in rome so we all went and uh, we just like walked the street and then got like drinks to go and um, stayed out there for a bit and then after hanging out at the Coliseum at night which was cool we went back to a place that was right next to our hotel and it was like a chill bar we got some drinks and then that was just our our last like night to, with everybody so we wanted to hang out and then then we went back packed and then headed out the next day and then we're home so luckily everything went smoothly we did get extremely lucky because the night that um, we were flying back home the United States lifted the COVID test requirement to enter back to the States which we were all supposed to get COVID tested that Saturday in order you know for our flights to go back home and the US was lifting at 12 at midnight so which was Italy time if you had your flight at 6 a.m. or later you didn't have to have a test and our flight was at 9 and we got so lucky because if you tested positive you did have to stay in Italy for like a week and quarantine which would have been very convenient because you do have to pay for that out of pocket and I was like so scared because I'm like oh my gosh what if I'm like asymptomatic and don't know and it's just like a mess like it would have been such a stressful situation so I'm glad we all made it we all got home and it was great so that was our whole trip and now we're back and I'm so jet lagged but it was seriously one of the best experiences of my entire life I really wanted to study abroad and since I missed out on that experience this kind of gave me that taste of it of getting really close to people that you're out of a country with all random strangers and get to just experience something really cool with one another and it was awesome and everyone was from all over the country and it was amazing and our tour director made our experience even better we she is an amazing person probably one of the best people I've ever met in my entire life we all loved her so much and adored her and all like teared up at the end of it it was just a great experience so if you're thinking about booking your trip like don't hesitate like do it it was truly one of the best experiences of my life and like literally day two everyone was like talking about the next trip that they were gonna book and yeah it was just 10 out of 10 exceeded my expectations i didn't expect the group to be amazing i knew like out of a group of 20 i'm like we're bound to be friends with a couple people but i didn't expect the whole group to get along and it not be clicky or anything like we all mixed and matched groups every time we were going to do something we all preferred to do things together and when people did 
go off to do different things. It was always mix match. Everyone sat with different people. It was just amazing and I loved it and I just can't wait to go on my next one now. So, so my camera keeps dying because I know this video is getting up there but I want to leave you guys there with that. If you guys have any questions at all, please comment them down below. I would love to help you guys out with anything. I feel like there's so much information even when my parents picked me up. They were like, so tell us about it. I'm like, there's just so much. Like, give me specifics of what you want to know and I will tell you. But yeah, again, any questions, leave them down below. And I hope you guys enjoy this video. And I wanted to break it down with every single thing we did because when I was learning, trying to search and learn more about EF, um, that's what I was looking for. I wanted to see everything that everyone did and kind of what I would be getting myself into. So I hope this provides some valuable information. So yeah, I hope you guys enjoyed it. And if you did, be sure to give it a thumbs up and subscribe down below if you haven't already. And I'll see you on my next video. Bye guys.